this is where we're up to. Young Jude came in on Saturday and he's emptied the stock room that was above. Well, to everywhere downstairs. So what we need to do is get the racking up and then we can start getting... All right, there, Dan. We need to get the racking up and then we can start getting this organised. I've changed my mind with this room here. Um, I kept saying it was an office. Paul actually was using this as a music room. That's why he'd insulated it. Not for heat. Well, I call it insulation. Whatever he's put in there. What I'm going to do is clad round this in ply, like a, a marine ply. And then I'm going to get a PVC door. The family business is windows and doors and they have mismeasures, measures. So I'm going to throw a, a PVC door in there, get this secure. And I'll have that as like, I'm not sure exactly, but a secure room. And then upstairs, the room that's now empty, I'll use as my office. So that should be all right. Cages have been ordered for the windows. So we've got some cages that will bolt on the inside just to get it secure. Not sure what I'm going to do with that one. It's a bit exposed, but that's that. What else do we need to do? I think that's about it. I'm not going to bother with the heating. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to reinstate that gas. So we'll probably just have a standing charge on the meter. And then for electric, I might put a bit of something in here, in here to stop it getting damp. But in terms of the central heating, I'm going to leave it because nobody will really be down here apart from probably in the morning and the afternoon and then when we're restocking. We've still got van rack in there for one of the other vans. We're going to get that sorted this weekend. I've had a mad few days actually. So chasing my tail a little bit. And today I've actually got to go back out on the tools. I've got to fix a Wiesman with an F2 fault. So I'm going to flush that in and then video it for some training for our engineers as well. Uh, and some quoting this afternoon. So yeah, let's crack on Daniel. Right, Scott's rang us. He's converting a heat on the boiler to a system boiler and he's a bit unsure on the wiring, so I'm gonna fly over there and see what we're dealing with. Fit a system boiler and a hive, unfortunately. Hive have started stealing our customers, as I've seen on the on their app. But we're fitting that hive, we'll get that wired up, and then we can go and fix this Wiesman, hopefully. It's an F2 fault, so more than likely there's restrictions somewhere in the heat exchanger, the hoses, or the plate. But to get him up and running today, in most cases, I'll drop the plate out, acid flush it through, <coughs> clean the hoses, and put it back together. We'll then give the option of, well, we'll see what we're dealing with when we get there first. The hiring times, yeah, so I was doing them with Freddie, weren't well, I? Freddie and Louis, two-year-old and four-year-old. I was on the uh, I was on this ladder, and as soon as the wind got behind, it was pulling them. So me and, we'll do that, we'll get them done this weekend. And talking about hiring as well, I've had two people now contact us for, that have seen our stuff on YouTube, two different people uh, that are kind of in the area as well. So that's brilliant. Initially, when I started the YouTube, it was to keep my team updated, especially when I've got engineers in Lancaster that can see what's going on. And also, if we do create a following, then we'll use it as a recruitment tool. So if there's new engineers that are coming through, that are potentially coming through, they can see what we're about, and hopefully we can start start some conversations from there, try and try and bring some some new lads in. But yeah, I'm going to arrange to have a chat with both of these lads and try. I know it's a bit it's a bit mad now going into winter, <coughs> going into winter, going up, uh, leading up to Christmas. So potentially Lucas starting uh, certainly one at least one of them next year, which will be good. But we'll see how we get on. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of messages, a lot of private messages as well, direct to like Instagram or or uh, or even where, where else have they got? It's mainly Instagram, yeah. So they've gone YouTube direct to Instagram about like running a plumbing business, but they've just started they've just started plumbing and how they go about running their own business and all the rest of it. But like the first thing, the first thing is become the best plumber, best engineer, tradesman that you can be. Definitely, like. Every, everybody seems to want to jump into business like the first 10 years was just about for me you're just trying to be, become the best plumber best engineer that you can and then the rest will follow if you feel that you want to 
you want to progress in that way. But it's essential because you, you need to earn the respect of the people that you're employing as well. So because of the, the level of knowledge that I've got myself from that 10 year, 10, 15 years of grinding and grafting and becoming the best I can, you can then hold a conversation with engineers that have got 30, 40 years experience and then it warrants respect. Whereas if you're going into business and you're looking to employ people and you've not, you've not actually done it yourself, some will argue that you can do that all day long, but I don't think you get the same respect from your engineers. So become the best first, and then if you feel you want to go into set your own business up, then then you, you start exploring them ideas and, and go from there. You got a fluke on you? Yeah. So what will you do first? It's a test continuity across the orange and the white of the mortise valve okay. on the three port. Continuity there. Okay, I'm going to drop one wire out. Just bear with me. Still got it. Right. So one of them is hot water, and then one of them is heating. This is one of the old glowworm, glowworm, British gas glowworm with the built-in programmer that you can control heating and hot water through it. So you've got two blocks. Not seen one of these for ages. So we've got live, neutral, earth, switch live, pump live. We've got three cables off this side. They're not labelled up on the. Go a bit closer, Dan. Uh, no, it's all right. <laughs> I've got another three cables that go into the PCB, but um, we're unsure. I can't even pull up the schematic to find out where they're wired in. So all these will be doing is one will be sending voltage to my cylinder start and one through my room start and then into the uh, into the little wiring center. So the three cables, I'll put all three into the wire go. And I got continuity, and then I've dropped them out one by one. What should I say? Yeah. And they've got two cables here. So it's one of these, uh, sorry, both of these that'll be going into the hive, heating and hot water, and I'm unsure exactly which one it is. So the next thing I can test is it passes through the, it'll pass through the room start, is I'll put them back into a block Turn the room stat down, and that should kill my continuity. Test that now. So both cables together on this side. We've got a Y plan. If it was an S plan, you'd be testing for brown on the motorized valve, whether it's heating and hot water. With the Y plan, we're testing for on the orange cable. You can test off the orange and the white cable. Yep, all the way down. That's all the way down. No test for continuity, and you shouldn't have it. See if it beeps up there between the orange and exactly white. the same cables. Yeah. Orange and white. It just doesn't show me the connections on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's them them connections off that block. See, there's there's nothing on it, is there? With your with your fluke, the number uh, two terminal on the cylinder stat, which yeah. was at far when you showed me the picture. Cylinder so stat, right. So this 16. Yeah. That 16 there, uh, go 16 and and white. Is the third room stat turned up? Room stat, you took it off. Oh, yeah, you've took that off. Right, go, link it, can't tell no, it's go to the orange. Just just test this for me quick, please. Right. Orange. Orange, orange of the motorized valve, yeah, to the 16, which is a blue. Still on, Scott, yeah? Just bear with me. There we go. Right, brilliant. Pull them apart. Yeah, pull them apart. Put them together. Sweet, neutral. Right, okay. Right, that's heating. Yeah, they they <coughs> they can be linked together. Hot water. And then you graze hot water off. What, so you've got blacks heating. Black is, is number yeah number four to the hive. Yeah, heating on. Brown is hot water on, hot water on. number three of the hive. Yeah. Grey is hot water off. Grey. Number one of the motorized valve. Oh, sorry, what number one? Yeah. Yeah, number one. Yeah. And then cap your pump. Yeah, got yeah. that, which is my grey. Cap kill. Yeah, uh, which is. What, what was your pump line actually? 
Is it grey? Yeah, yeah, grey. That'll disappear. Like switch that. Switch that. Brilliant. So and then last one before you leave, that room start. Room start, just, is there a neutral in it? Right, we just finished with Scott then. That was a bit of a weird one. Now, I don't normally get involved with the wiring. What I'll try to do, or say don't get involved, I don't physically go. I try and um, just act like a technical over the phone. So if they've got an issue, I want the engineers wiring for themselves or starting the miles better. My, my lads are miles better now from obviously your standard stuff like your combis where you're just wiring EPHs to highs to then wiring S plants and Y plants. But that job was a heat only boiler to system boiler. So on the system boiler, we just need a live neutral earth and a switch live. We've got the pump built into the boiler unless you start doing hot water priority where it gets a little bit uh, there's a little bit more to it and also with the integral diverter valves whether it be Worcester or Wiesman but in this situation we had a heat only boiler that had a live neutral earth switch live pump live because it's got an external pump but it also had the hot water control in there and everything was controlled from the boiler itself I've not actually seen one of them before they're probably common to a, a lot of people it was the British Gas Glow Worm 330 that had the internal programmer that sent voltage both to heating and hot water and hot water off. But there was nothing labeled up. I pulled up the schematic of the, the boiler itself and I couldn't find it, I couldn't see this block on it. And I searched for that intelligent kit or whatever they call it and I couldn't find it there. And on the actual terminals of the PCB, there was nothing labeled up. So I don't know which is the quickest way of doing it, but my way is to start belling the cables out to a point where I know they're safe, that they're all live wires, and then I'll put voltage through one of them. So I joined all of them together first to, uh, what did I do initially? So yeah, so I dropped out, I exposed the wiring diagram at the cylinder, and you can suss out then where your hot water, hot water on is, hot water demand should be. So I did hot water, demand for hot water and hot water off, join them two together, and then I got continuity at the bottom. So that would tell me that at least that there on the hot water side. And for the room stat, I exposed the room thermostat and I tested for the demand from the room, the demand going into the room stat and a neutral. So then I picked up a neutral and one of the other cables at the boiler and I got continuity there. So that would give me the heating and then to test for the which one was hot water on and which one was my hot water off because I'm both because I know that they are both alive that neither of the cables were a neutral I then put voltage I'll just rig up alive through a wire go through a terminal block to one of them cables test for voltage at the other side and that's how we uh, how we broke it down so then we're going to we're going to send them cables into the new hive, which will be central heating on hot water on and hot water off. You need the hot water off terminal for a three port valve. Otherwise, it will not work right and you'll not have independent control over both heating and hot water. Now we're on our way to the Wiesman boiler with the F2. We're actually running late. I've asked Joanne to give the customer the heads up. I'm going to strip this down. I've got limited gear in the back. But we've got some acid, we've got a wet vac, got some tools, so we should be able to get them up and running. Let's go. Another job we've got to sort out is the alarm for both of them units. I'm not sure what wireless alarm to get. That's a point. If there is anyone out there that can recommend a decent alarm system, a wireless alarm, is it Ajax? Is Ajax, uh, I think they might be one of the bigger players, I might be getting that wrong. But I need, we need a decent alarm system for both buildings ASAP. You can put bodyguard down. Yeah. Outside, yeah, sure. night shift. <laughs> hey Kat, you all right? Hi, yeah, yeah, you? What have we got? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this woman, I don't know what you want me to do with her. Okay. So, are you able to go out to her or? Uh, struggling, what's the, who? What's the... I, I, sorry, I, sorry, I just messaged it to you as well. Sorry, I thought you'd seen it. Yeah, um, so I've seen when it. On the 30th of October, now she's got a leak on a boiler, but it's tripping onto the electric socket for the boiler. Right, okay. 
So is that something we, we need to go out to now or can she wait or? So I've got a guy who's not happy that we've parked on the pavement. Um, <laughs> shaking his head at me. <laughs> I was only parking up for a second. Right, okay. Um, so, Matt, sorry, Matt's been out to it and service the boiler? Yeah, on the 30th of October. So she said he's had a little leak, which has got worse, but now it's dripping onto the electric socket, which supplies the boiler. On the 13th? On the 30th of October, he went out. Oh, oh right, oh, right, okay. Oh, so it's been a while. Yeah, I did say that too, and I did say if it's not boiler related to what it went out to, then she's getting charged to call out. Like, yeah, I see what you mean. What bo what boiler is it, Catherine? Uh, let me just go back on to it. Sorry, I've just had Con on the phone. Sorry. Just that like Amy said she's got nobody to go out, so that's somebody to ring you. So what forgot tomorrow? I'll have a look for you. Um, it's an Alpha E Tech 28. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And where is she? She's in Oral, which is, I know it's a track, it's WN5. Oh, great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where are the lads tomorrow? Um, let me just have a look. Oh, Let's have a look. BL2, BL2. Manchester, Wigan. Oh, they've seen it. Where's that Oral job? Yeah, so tomorrow, tomorrow, obviously she's trying to get it today, isn't she? But we're going to. Yeah, yeah we're going We're going to struggle, I'll but be. Matt's in Oral tomorrow. Right, okay. Oh, so sorry, you can't see. Go. Sorry, you can't see Matt's diary. No, no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, love. Sorry, Matt is in Oral between um, between one and four tomorrow. So send him, send between him straight after tomorrow. that. Matt. Right, okay. Right, I'll put it on for tomorrow then for Matt. All right, Kat. Cheers, love. What's she right, saying? Okay, What's she saying there, Amy? She's saying. Uh, what is she <laughs> saying now? <laughs> He said he's got one. <laughs> it's what? She said she wants to put him in for between two and five because he's got a job in between one and four. Yeah, yeah, between two and five. Yeah, sound. Between Wherever, just, five, just yeah. straight after yeah, that right, job. Yeah. yeah, right, okay. I'll put it on for now. Cheers. <laughs> All right, bye. Right. bye, bye, bye. Yeah, so again, this is back to the same issue. So we've got Catherine that is uh, looking after the BHG stuff. And because we're not on one system, she's using propeller. She can't see our other engineer's diary. But obviously, well, I can see it here. And Matt is in oral tomorrow, so he can call straight after that job. Right, let's go in first. I'll check whether this customer's okay with us filming. And then we'll fix this part. So we've got a Viesman with an F2. Overheat the hoses actually don't. Hose doesn't feel too bad though. They're a little bit awkward on the WB1Bs because the hose passes through the case though. So it's a little bit awkward to get that hose out. Two. So, so, don't even mess about with these anymore. Take the circuit board out. We're doing this as a bit of a training video for the uh, for our engineers as well. If I'm working on the plate or the hoses or the main heat exchanger with these Viesmans, I just take the circuit board out. It takes literally two minutes. We'll time it. What we're done. Set the board out. Not serve you, but. Uh, a big headache after just in case you get any residual water in the past i've had residual water <coughs> get into the board and then you're spending an hour <coughs> with a hair dryer drying it all out and in some cases you can you can risk blowing the board so and this boiler as well it's not even got any external controls it's just a live neutral earth stick them in a wago and then crack on Circuit board, what are we on? Two minutes, 17. Might take a couple more minutes to put it back later, five, 10 minutes, and it'll risk. <coughs> Prevent a lot of messing later on.
some of the valves under here only need to look at them and they start leaking. If you're on a top floor, bungalow, or the boiler's at the highest point, you don't need to bother draining or isolating the rads, just drop your pressure through the drain off valve, whether it's at the top of the heat exchanger, on the newer 100s, it's, you, you've got the option to do it lower down, <coughs> or at the drain point. But ideally, don't touch the isolation valves. It's definitely if they're over like five to seven year old, you can risk it, but something else that ends up catching up with you. So we're draining the system, open three rads upstairs on this side. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Not be able to see from the camera but it's absolutely rammed <coughs> all the bits that are in it but i you know i can see there alone. right let's clean this out get it back together Washers. I've got some grease in here, silicon grease. <clears throat> Definitely need to sort the toolbox out on my van. Need to get some racking in if I'm going to be doing some repairs when it gets really cold. Grease them up. Grease sensor. So you can get the plate out by dropping the trigger motor on the on the diverter, <coughs> pull out the little temperature sensor and is there anything else? Oh, a low water pressure switch, pull that cable out and you can just get it out. It is a bit awkward, but doable. That's really greased. And the expansion vessel hose, that one. It's good practice as well to just, while, you, while your system is draining, just check that vessel on the check that expansion vessel. We normally set them at about 0.8 of a bar. Right, cool. <clears throat> Let's check that plate. Should be wearing gloves as well. I don't advise doing this. It's just something I've done for well since an apprentice. I am contradicting myself a little bit here because <clears throat> I'm saying don't touch the flow return valves. They're more, there's more chance of them leaking, but I've needed to isolate the cold. If you turn the, you can turn the cold off at the stop tap, but then you've no water to flush out your plate. In that case, you'd then need to cap off the cold and the underside of this would be a nightmare. So anyway, we've risked it so far. It isn't leaking. Right. Pressurised, water's on. 52 minutes. Circuit board back in. Right, we're back up and running with no leaks, systems filled, circuit boards back in. Again, it took me about four or five minutes and we're running. The full jobs took me roughly an hour and that's with the camera and, and a bit of messing about. So we're running hot water now. Previously, customer will put hot water on. We get 70, 80, 90 degrees and then the boiler would overheat and shut down. And that's when you get in the F2 fault. 
Now we're running hot water, I'm at 55 degrees, the boiler's modulating, back off, it's backing off, and we're good. What I do do when I am initially switching the boilers on, I'll use my vent at the top, run that into your wet back or a bucket, you should have a bucket underneath the boiler really, open your filling loop, uh, I've still got it open actually, the pressure's pretty low, open your filling loop uh, and allow the water to pass through the heat exchanger, clear any air, put your boiler on service mode and then back it off to 10, 20%, allow the pump to spin, get rid of any air and then go to hot water, otherwise you can be fighting with it overheating. But now it's good to go, um, let's get packed up in the van and I'll give you a run through of what I would do if I've still got issues uh, and also quoting further down the line. Yeah? Good. Right, that boiler's sorted. Now, there's a few things that should have been a bit better there. If you, were, if you are taking the plate out, you should be wearing gloves. I'm not really setting a good example there. You should be wearing gloves, but the call came in today. Uh, we tight for time, and I just wanted to make sure I could get that customer up and running. So we've been out, I fixed that within, within I think we've done it roughly within an hour, it might have just gone over an hour. Um, everything went pretty well, the fan is a bit noisy on that boiler, it's 15 years old. He's actually, I was surprised because the customer had said that's the first time anybody's really worked on it, it's had a filling loop underneath and that's it, which is, which is really surprising for them hoses, how soft they felt. I didn't take the hoses out. In some cases, that's what you need to do. And in extreme cases, it's the full heat exchanger out, hoses and plate. But today, I just wanted to show an example of, you've got the call out, you've got an F2, within an hour, an hour and a half, you can get the boiler up and running. But I all also plant the seed, and even in some cases, send a quote for either taking the full heat exchanger out, changing the hoses, cleaning the plate, and potentially installing the filter, or the option of upgrading the boiler. It is 15 year old. But today it's sound, it's running brilliant, it's running really well. What you can find as well, in some cases, you'll run the hot, you'll do a, a, everything that I've just done now. You might not get everything out of the heat exchanger, you'll run the boiler on hot water. You've always got to run it on hot water or on the service mode on max because on the central heating side, Viesman especially really back off, they modulate right down so it doesn't always show itself. On hot water, you should be getting about 55, 60 degrees on your display. If you've cleaned it and you're still getting around 70, 75, and for instance, you can see the pressure gauge bouncing, there's still, there's still some shit in that boiler. You, you're gonna need to get it out, or you'll get another phone call further down the line. But in this case, it's running bang on. The cost of that job will charge, um, minimum charge up to an hour and a half, which is 120 pounds plus the acid which I think that's about eight, nine quid. I probably used half a tub on that. And that's that job done. Right, Dan the man, let's see what he wants. <coughs> Daniel. Hi, mate, you all right? How are you, pal? Not so bad, just starting out in Scott's job. Oh, have you been over oh, to good. Scott? Did the shower boards go all right? Yeah, what a dream. Um, Ryan Baldwin um, literally had the board, the board, had the board Scott, yourself. Scott's ringing me while um, you're on phone. He's just Tommy Ring Keeper. Has he? Right, go on, what's the is everything sorted there? Everything sorted, really. 10, 20 minutes. Um, give it a little chance to warm up so it's a bit easier to work with. Um, and then we'll get the boiler going again. Um, by the time we come back from lunch, mate, panel's on wall. Oh, good. Good. So, and it's sorted it. Yeah, so we, we just fit the shower after that. A bit awkward, but we, we fit, fit the shower easy enough. Um, yeah. And yeah, sorted it. Fucked up. Right, brilliant, Dan. Oh. So tomorrow, Mark the bar, what we're doing? Right, we're doing I'll ring that? you back because we're just in the middle of filming, so I'll ring you back and let oh, yeah. you know. So right, I'll let you know what no we're worries. doing tomorrow. But that, right, the, no that, worries, that uh, basically, yeah, I'll ring you tomorrow, Pat. I'll, I'll ring you later on. Yeah, I was just wondering if it's wiring or if it's. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a bit of wiring and yeah, there's, we'll sort it. So all right, I'll ring you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sam. Cheers, Dan. Alright, cheers mate. See you mate, chat, chat. Yes, Dan. Dan's our superstar. He's actually my first uh, first apprentice that's, that's made it. Uh, but he's brilliant, Dan.
anyway right we'll finish off we'll finish off today tomorrow i'm not sure exactly what i've got on i don't know whether we're out on tools again um but we'll plan today and make sure all the lads are sorted and then if we need to deal with any overspill then we'll sort it out and i need to be proactive in getting at least one more engineer because it's not even we've had a couple of cold days and we've not had many freezes actually but i think we've had four or five frozen connies which is which is minimal but it's coming it's definitely coming and we need to be ready for it